Welcome to Yates Makes. This video is all about using deli paper in collage. How to get an image onto it, how to apply it, different adhesives, how to um, build a surface, how to prepare images um, digitally ready to print on, how to print it safely without wrecking your printer forever, how to get the most out of the transparent qualities of it to do overlays for you jelly plate lovers and journal lovers, some magazine transfer, printed onto deli paper and then used as fun little sketchbook collages again making the most of that transparent quality and I'll touch on a couple of other techniques that I probably neglected to mention in uh, the previous video on collage and decollage techniques okay let's make a start right deli paper I'm probably preaching to the converted indeed it was a suggestion on this on this channel I didn't even know about it until a few months ago um, it's kind of waxy, somewhere in between tissue and tracing paper, I'd say. Um, so here I am getting some sheets of deli paper ready for my inkjet printer. And you can see that I've cut them as near as possible to kind of A4 size. And I'm fixing them along the kind of narrow edge with a little bit of glue stick. Now this would just mean when you feed them into your printer tray, um, they're a little bit more robust and far less likely to jam up. Obviously your, your leading edge needs to be the, the glued one, otherwise you will have some problems. Okay, so this begs the question, what to print on your, on your deli paper using your printer? So, I mean, you can go pattern, you could do pages of text. Um, I'm just gonna run through a couple of really quick suggestions um, just using plain old words, so you don't need any fancy stuff like editing software, Photoshop, Procreate or anything. So here I've scanned a really old um, advert from one of these kind of old antique newspapers I've collected from over the years. And all I'm doing is just cropping it down here and resizing it so it fits on the page. Now, if you go um, up to picture format and then to corrections, you've got this picture correction options button at the bottom of that menu and you can do things like increase the contrast really simple is going to make my image a lot cleaner so that when I print it I'm not going to get all the muddy kind of um, uh, paper tones in there I'm just going to get that line image back into kind of um, picture format and the color you've got all sorts of different um, simple presets in there that I'm just scrolling through now that might be of use as well as some tone and color saturation menus as well. Now, if you work on, um, if you like working on a bigger scale and you wanna collage a picture across a few sheets and kind of patchwork them together, you know, simple. Just work with whatever picture image, text image you wanna work with, photographic image, and get it to the scale you want on one of your sheets. You'll notice I've changed the orientation to landscape here. And once you're satisfied with the, the size, you can simply copy and paste that image and just kind of reposition it so that you know when you print, it's gonna grab all your sections, you can overlap them, and um, uh, they're all kind of jigsaw and collage together on your larger format. And just like before, you can play around with the colors, the filters, all those different options that are in the picture format and um, color, artistic effects, transparency, etc. Just have a play, have an explore, um, and see where you get to. If you're working with shapes, obviously you've got all of these, if you're doing quite a poppy image, you've got all of these great um, fill patterns, textures. You can even import a photograph as a fill as well that will sit within that shape that you've drawn. So look, you know, you can get a lot of mileage out of Microsoft Word if you're not lucky enough to have all these fancy pants editing um, apps and bits of software. So once you've got your, your printouts, you can then think about surfaces. So here I'm working on wood, I've built up layers of collage, uh, some painted parts, and I'm just sanding back. So here, look, is you know, as a kind of base layer, if you like, um, a really simple application of my deli paper. I've just got some handwritten text, which I've done with a kind of, what was it, an oil pastel, and I'm just pasting that straight on with some gel medium. And now I'm spray painting, 
some stencil work with uh, you know just some graphic details just to see how you know I've not tried this before so I wanted to see how well the the deli paper kind of adhered over something that was a bit more glossy so again I've got my gel medium this is liquid gel medium made by Liquitex and I'm just brushing that on and trying to keep it as even as thin as possible and then here is why I'm really much preferring deli paper to tissue paper that it just stands up a lot more um, it doesn't wrinkle it won't break once you've kind of made contact with the glue or whatever you're using to fix it with um, so yeah that was a Liquitex gel medium and um, you want to use it quite sparingly if it's really kind of thick it is going to soak through that paper and make it quite fragile but like I said before it's certainly more robust than tissue paper okay you see I'm starting to sort of rip back edges there and you know these are collage techniques that I really love um, you know in this previous video that I did on this kind of decollage techniques is I love cutting into the surface of you know multiple layers of collage and um, certainly this deli paper works just fine as, as one more layer in that kind of stack if you like and will create some interesting kind of more spontaneous looking um, edges and textures and you know as well once it's totally dry you can sand it and it, and it will kind of peel back and rip in places and, and create some interesting surface as well um, so what else can you do or what else are the benefits of using this deli paper well you've you know the transparency of it is, is the main thing um, and you know what I've decided to do here just for a bit of an experiment is print this middle section off but change the color um, just to use as a kind of uh, as an overlay and where the two colors blend I'm going to get a, a slight color shift um, uh, but the transparency is you know it allows you to kind of like line up and register images or offset them slightly get that kind of poppy kind of screen printed effect so yeah definitely the the transparency and it goes obviously more transparent once you've applied the glue as well and it kind of sinks into the the image and the surface a little more so again um just a little bit of gel medium there and lining it up and not even being too precise because you know like i said the, the offset nature of it can look kind of cool anyway so um, yeah definitely the transparency you know work with it play with it you'll have loads of fun right let's have a look at a kind of slightly different application of this again I've used my inkjet to print out some pattern and again I want that transparency of the, the deli paper so my background colors kind of seep through if you like um, but I'm fixing here with spray mount and if you've not used spray mount you can, you can pick it up from your art shop and what you get with spray mount is a kind of time window where you can reposition things and um, you can not only reposition but you can cut into your layers quite precisely um, without kind of ripping if you want a more graphic precise edge um, so here I am having kind of applied a bit of spray mount to the back of this, trimmed it down. I've, I've now got a little cardboard stencil of the kind of star, which is the kind of main kind of design feature that's repeated across this, this bigger sort of scale collage I've been working on. It's a bit of a jigsaw, a bit of a patchwork. Um, but using the spray mount, I know that I've got plenty of time to kind of work on these graphic details and still be able to peel up the parts that I want to remove without anything ripping or you know having to really dig into all the layers of collage that sit under there. Um, so yeah, it's a way of just keeping a little bit more control um, over the process. Okay, just skipping back in time a little bit. Um, this section is, um, I've used the deli paper just kind of plain not printed on, not drawn on, and I'm using it as a, a kind of screen, if you like, just as a layer to kind of knock back um, some of the intensity, the tone, the color, the detail of an area. Um, and again, because I've applied it with spray mount, uh, spray mount there, I can um, cut into that and reveal sections 
where I want them. So it's another way of just, um, you know, really quickly, really effectively playing with kind of layers, tones, transparencies, and, and just syncing some of your image a bit, bit lower in the mix, if you like, and bringing sections forward. Um, so it's just great. I'm finding, you know, so many uses for it. And, you know, just doing this experiment has led me on to thinking of a whole nother piece I could do just by using this technique. Um, so yeah, you don't even have to print anything on it and you're still gonna get loads of use. Okay, there's one last little pattern section that I printed up and um, cut into again, just exactly the same as before. Um, so useful for um, this piece that I was working on. Right, let's move on to gel plate printing and deli paper because this is kind of where I first encountered deli paper it was suggested to me like apologies I can't remember who suggested it it was quite a while back now so I, I bought some and I actually haven't used it that much with the gel plate but I, I intend to and um, you know like for, for those of you that love your kind of magazine transfer or kind of laser copy transfer you know it's, it's gonna be you know this is something I'll look into more maybe do a separate video on, but here I am just um, transferring a magazine image, um, you know, one of these kind of glossy fashion mags. Um, very thin layer of Amsterdam black acrylic, light pressure, um, you know, if you've tried this, it's hit and miss, you know how these magazine transfers go, there's a bit of kind of alchemy and um, goodness knows what involved, um, but a thin layer, don't hang around, don't let things to dry too much and light pressure. Even with all that, you're still going to get the odd patch where the paper hasn't made full contact. Um, but that's all right. Those little blemishes can look good. So deli paper straight on top and um, uh, probably applied it the wrong way. The fold would have probably been easier to work with <laughs> had it been the other way up, but it's all good. Um, so leave that on there for, I don't know, once it's applied, leave it on there for a good couple of minutes and you should find it peels off just fine. And you can move on to background. So again, it's the transparency of the deli paper that's just fun to work with as, as a kind of collage material. And um, so I've just put a few sort of very neutral toned textures down, laid my um, uh, deli, play, uh, deli paper down, I can't say this, deli paper gel plate transfer, <laughs> bit of a mouthful um, over the top and just had a bit of fun with some kind of surreal um, elements. These are just like those little exhibition stickers um, and um, a bit of like fun with some word collage as well. Okay, now I meant to add in the previous video on collage I published that, um, you know, distressing your collage can be quite useful at times and um, you know I'm going to crack on now and try and finish this um, kind of flag magic wand kind of patchwork I've been um, cooking up and working on um, just by using a wet sponge fingertips just to kind of distress and break some of those paper surfaces before sealing it <laughs> you know sometimes you need a more delicate touch than the electric sander and um, with that, going to bid you farewell. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, uh, remember to subscribe if you found the vid useful. Check out some of the other videos. I will look forward to seeing you soon. Take it easy. Ta-ta.